very warm good evening to all present here. Dr. Alexander Jacob IPS is an Indian retired police officer. He rose to the rank of Director General of Police in the Kerala Police Force heading the Prisons Department and later assumed charge as the Managing Director of Kerala Police Housing Construction Corporation. At present, he is a Nodal Officer of National University for Police Sciences and Security Studies. He started his career as a sub-editor in Malayala Manorama, the leading newspaper in Kerala, and then as a lecturer in Marivanius College. We have his student here, Mr. Santosh Sharin, sir, was his student. He was mentioning. I don't see sir here. Uh, and then he was selected in Indian Overseas Bank, uh, but he refused to join as he thought it was not his cup of tea. And later he was recruited to the Indian Polar <coughs> Service in the year 1982. He was awarded the President's Scout Award in 1972. He won Best Probationer Award, Co-Curricular Activities and LB <coughs> Seva Cup from IPS Academy, Hyderabad in 1983. He was honored as the most outstanding young person of Kerala by the Junior Chamber, JCs in 1989 and as most outstanding young person of India by the Indian Junior Chamber, JCs in 1990. He was awarded the President's Police Medal for Meritorious Service by the President of India on Republic Day in 2004 and also President's Medal for Distinguished Service in the year 2011, which is the highest award a civil servant can ever receive. He is married to Dr. Elizabeth John, a reader in the Collegiate Education Department, and they are blessed with three daughters. Thank you. And the Jacob IPS to speak a few words. President of the meeting, distinguished leaders of ICAI from different parts of India who assembled here, and in Parameshwaran and the dedicated team who are taking out today, and all the members who are assembled in this hall. I'm very happy to come before you because many of my classmates and my students are available in the hall. My long-time classmate was Roy Varghis, who is a member of your organization. He is now in Gujarat, so he told me he couldn't come. My own income tax consultant, Alex Kuriakos, is here, and so many students are also here. So it's very happy to come to your midst. When we look into history, we find that when the accountants did their job, great nations, great empires came to be. But when our accountants failed, the empires fell and disaster came to that country. For the first time in world history, we see an income tax introduced in the world. That was during Lord Rama, whom we remember for the Rama Rajya, the ideal state which Mahatma Gandhi wanted to introduce to India after independence. Lord Rama went to the forest for 14 years, fought Ravana, defeated him, and brought his wife and Lashmana, etc., back to Ayodhya. He assumed his throne, and for the first time, he asked the finance minister what he is supposed to do. As all finance ministers in history, he set increased tax. Lord Rama came down to the streets of Ayodhya and asked the people, how do you feel? Should I increase the tax? People told him, Sir, your great grandfather Dilip and, and others went for Devasura war. The country was impoverished, and for years we couldn't cultivate our fields, so we were poverty stricken. Lord Rama got in between the two, and he made the first great principle of taxation. Maximum income tax shall be 20% of the whole produce. That was the rule of uh, Lord Rama. This made the great Ramarajya, the welfare state, possible. And for the first time in world history, he appointed Amatyas, or ministers, to look after different things, of which the minister in charge of taxation and accountants is specially mentioned in Ramayana. When the account in the principle went down well, agriculture prospered, the country prospered, and then what an ideal state Ramarajya came to be. 
when a country is ruled by rulers who cannot do taxation properly it can bring in great disasters this also is recorded in world history after the mahabharata war yudhishthira came to power he appointed arjuna as the finance minister arjuna was a spendthrift he started the employment uh, doll system widow pension and the kanyavithal kendra where free food was supplied the country was impoverished and the empire was tottering at that time lord krishna came and took yudhishthira to devaloka and made him sit in front of mahabali whom keralites believe that he ruled once upon a time kerala during the onam days we remember him yudhishthira started telling look i have started the widow pension i have started the unemployment doll scheme i have started the free food scheme mahabali listened to him carefully and said if all what you have said so far is true you are unfit to be king if your treasure is emptied like this till the end of time you will your country will be the most poverty stricken state in the world i was also ruling a country in the in the earth once upon a time i started unemployment doll but there was nobody unemployed in kerala at that time so nobody came to receive the pension i started the widow's pension widow said we don't want any pension from the treasury our family will look after us he started free food scheme but there was no dridravasi in those times so nobody came to eat that food mahabali told him you are made king because you have to create rich richness in your country your accountants have to work properly wastage of money have to be stopped then only a country will prosper vidasha came down to the earth and appointed bhima who was a miser of the highest degree as the next finance minister he started to stop all dots all pension schemes and when nothing was moving out of the treasury treasury got money but people remained poor because no money could flow to them so the two kinds of accountants was clearly uh, earmarked by vedavyasa who says what is required is create money distribute it properly and see that the accountants do their job where the money goes has to be correctly accounted for then only your country will succeed this great lesson of mahabharata that the job of the accountants is to create prosperity in the world is something what all the chartered accountants should remember at the time of chandragupta maurya the first great empire <coughs> which india created luckily chandragupta maurya had a prime minister his name was chanakya or kaudilya he wrote the artha shastra in which how wealth has to be created it has to be preserved how it has to be spent and how the money has to be accounted for the great duty of the accountants chanakya describes minutely and chanakya for the first time in world history had one post created he was called koshadeksha kosha means treasury koshadeksha means head of the treasury so the how money has to be spent and how it has to be accounted for how it has to be tracked where the money goes has to be tracked and the wonderful system artha shastra describes from chapter 5 to chapter 8 very clearly shows that the when the accountants did their job properly the great mauri nembar was possible when magasthanis the ambassador of selukas nikator came to padali putra he describes the pos- the prosperity of the land and he says no land in the alexander's great empire could match totally putra and the rule of bindu sara when the accountants did their job the country was prosperous but the grandson of chandragupta maurya was ashoka a great disaster he was a great king a welfare oriented king and h g wells when he wrote his world history he says of all the kings and emperors who decked the walls of history the greatest of them all is undoubtedly ashoka the great devanambriya tissa that was his original name but ashoka's uh, rule became a great disaster because 
he couldn't have good accountants with him. He first started a scheme with which people have to plant trees on both sides of the road. If you plant a tree, you are given a subsidy, something equal and do 100 rupees of our time. People started planting trees on both sides of the road. The travelers got shade. A lot of birds could assemble there. There was no problem of global warming, or else the global warming would have come down. Everything possible. But after some time, they took account. The number of trees planted for which subsidy was taken was 10 times the number of trees actually could be seen on the roads. Because 90% of the trees were never planted. Only subsidy was taken. Ashoka made a rule. He started hospitals and veterinary hospitals. And for treating every cow or every animal, a subsidy was given. After some time, then when the accounts were taken, we found that the number of cows treated in the veterinary hospitals of Mauryan Empire was almost 15 times the actual number of animals available in the Mauryan Empire. Corruption of the whole thing. 2,300 years later, Padaliputra and Bihar, the place where Ashoka lived, I have Kali Tita Kumbhavana now. <laughs> but 2,300 years back, it was Kali treatment to Kumbhavana. That was only different. For treating animals, there was a Kumbhavana. The accountants failed to keep track of the money. The net result was Ashogan Empire burst. He was arrested by his grandson, somebody kept in prison. Every day he was given an arm, arm like he up. One Nellika was given. He ate that one Nellika per day, remained in prison and died in prison. If accountants of a country fail, this will be the fate of the king. If chartered accountants of Trivandrum fail, the fate of the ministers ruling here will be very terrible after a few years. Because money has to be tracked properly, or else you can face great disasters. Accountants have to track the money. The accountancy has to be very correctly done. We again have a similar failure in one of the great kings of India. That was Vikramaditya the Great. He had nine great learned people in his court. Thandundari, Shamanaka, Amarasunga, Shangu, Vedala, Hatta, Kalagarpara, Kalidasa, Varakumiru, Varnuji, nine of them. All great men, every time some poetry is written, thousand gold coins will be given to them. Thousand gold coins, uh, one gold coin is 33,000 rupees now. So thousand gold coins mean 3.3 .3 crores of rupees given to a poem. And bloody fellows will write poem and collect money and uh, go. And within 20 years, Vikramaditya's great empire crumbled. The white huns invaded India. The, the Guptan army could not face them. And we saw disaster for 400 years. Wave after wave of the invaders came. Ultimately, the Muslims came and they took over Delhi and North India because accountants could not keep track of the money and the treasury during Vikramaditya's time. This is the problem. But when we get great uh, emperors who could keep, uh, keep accounts, the progress was fantastic. And the greatest example is Akbar. Akbar's rule was fantastic. He got a great prime minister, Birbal, a great Brahmin. But the greatest of his ministers was a chartered accountant. His name was Raja Thondarman. He was an accountant, he was a Kanakan. He was a Vaishya by birth. He told Akbar that land has to be classified according to productivity. Tax should be collected according to productivity. And that money has to be brought and not more than 30% should be used for the army. Rush should go for administration. Wonderful was the, uh, the Prime Minister Birbal and the great accountant, Raja Thondarman. He brought in the Rayatwari system of farming. He brought in the Mahilwari system of farming. He brought in the Mansabdari system of uh, classifying land and paying tax. Akbar Sambar became very rich. And Raja Thondarman was such a great accountant that he kept the system for almost 50 years. And the result is what we see in two great books. Akbar Jahangir and Shah Jahan, they created in three generations such mighty constructions. They constructed Fatehpur Sikri. They first constructed the Agra Fort. 
they constructed the Taj Mahal, the great constructions of India. And Indian economy became the biggest economy in the world. 20% of the world's economy belonged to the Indian Empire, Akbar's Empire. And in 1532, we have the great Sir Thomas More's great utopia written in English. He was the Prime Minister of uh, the great uh, Henry VIII, Batman, but a great ruler, Henry VIII. He wrote Utopia, and then he searched for a capital for Utopia. When he searched for a capital, he said, it should be the best administrative town in the world. He searched for different cities, how administration is done. And ultimately, the capital of Utopia is Kodikoda, the capital of Samurins in Kerala. That was the best uh, town, according to Sir Thomas, the capital of Utopia. And Milton, when he wrote his paradise last, he had to describe indescribable wealth of Satan. So he writes, the wealth of Satan is like the wealth of Ormus and the Ind. India's wealth was proverbial. Ormus is the port where Iran captured the British ship and when the, the oil ships come out of the Arabian Gulf. So indescribable wealth can be described only with two words, wealth of Ormus, the port, and wealth of India. India became such a wealthy country that it was marveling the world. World was envying it with us because a great accountant, a great financier like Raja Thondramal constructed a taxation system and a treasury system in which accounts were very clearly <coughs> tabled. Akbar Jahangir and Shah Jahan's time was the glorious reign of Indian Empire. In the last 3,000 years, our country has never reached such heights. One-fifth of the world economy belonged to India. That was our greatness. But when an accountant fails, it brings great disasters, great disasters. We study about French Revolution. Why has it happened? The thing is described in The Ascent of Money, the great book by Neil Ferguson, the greatest economist who, are living now, who is living now. A man called Law came from England advised Louis XIV, the Roy Solil, the Sun King, that the wars can be fought without creating money. So he told the king to print coins and notes and circulate it. Nobody will know that we are printing the note. Whether the note will be surplus more than the financial status of a French empire, nobody will know. Louis XIV believed this man and started printing money. He fought for different wars. After five wars, the amount of money spent for the wars was almost five times the total economy of this country. And by the time Roy Soli Louis XIV died, French economy collapsed. People have nothing to eat. And within 16 years, it resulted in the French Revolution of 1789. If accountants fail, if economy cannot be maintained by finance uh, officers, the country can, the great French empire fell. It took 200 years for them to climb up. Destroyed, the economy destroyed. For 200 years, the economy was lost. So accountants has to keep, they, they shall do their job. Then only countries can prosper. We have a great PhD thesis. That PhD thesis is about the Chola Empire. And I'm, very, I'm a great fan of Raja Raja Chola, who built the Brigadeshara Temple of Tanjava. And what, was his, what made it possible? And uh, the great PhD thesis of the Jawaharlal University is the capital consolidation under the Cholas and the role of the Chettis and accountants in building that great empire. It is the empire came not because of Radha Radha Chola, Radha Radha Chola. A great community of Chettis came. They did business and they had fantastic accountants with which the trade between Tamil Nadu, Malaysia, Indonesia, Cambodia, and all the Southeast Asia. They called Bang Bay Bengal Chola Lake. But all the money was consolidated, accounted for, and invested. And Jayendra Chola and Jayendra Chola had fantastic prime ministers. They were all Brahmins. Brahmin prime minister, but a Vaishya accountant and a finance minister. This is a combination with Akbar practice, same thing that Cholas practiced. This Brahmin Chetty combination created wealth. And Chola Hembe became a, a miracle of the thing. At one time, the Chola Hembe occupied Ceylon, Sri Lanka, 
அது ஸ்ரீலங்கா பர்மா தாய்லாந்து இந்தோனேஷியா ஹாஃப் ஆஃப் இந்தோனேஷியா அண்ட் கம்போடியா ஆல்மோஸ்ட் எயிட் கண்ட்ரிஸ் ஆஃப் ப்ரெசென்ட் டே ஓர் அண்டர் த சோலா எம்பயர் இட் வாஸ் கண்ட்ரோல்ட் ஃப்ரம் தமிழ்நாடு தட் வாஸ் அ கிரேட்னஸ் இட் இஸ் பாசிபிள் பிகாஸ் அக்கௌண்டன்ஸ் குட் குட் டூ தேர் ஜாப் ப்ராப்பர்லி we in kerala have fantastic example in the 20th century two great women should be remembered for their great accounting skills and creating this magnificent kerala we, we are very proud of kerala's culture it was primarily possible because of two ladies one was the rani lakshmi bhai the senior regent of travanko from 1924 to 1931 when the great flood of 1924 came tonnutombal vellapokka the king went and saw the flood and found so many dead bodies coming he had a heart attack and the king suddenly died now ministers ministers may may see so many dead bodies but no heart attack will happen that we have proof <laughs> the king got a heart attack he died suddenly there was no male heir at that time because chitrirnal was only 11 years old so the senior regent rani the grand daughter of raja ravi varma was asked to take over this lady took over from 1924 to 1931 seven years till chitrarnal reached 18 years and this lady did wonders she had a divan an englishman his his name was watson his cousin mother was cotton from which we get uh, cotton hill and all another of his cousin was barton from which we get barton hill and all in toronto and this man was a wonderful accountant he first told the rani that the railway line is stopping at peta because the ministers told uh, the great king if railway line comes into the city all the evil spirits will enter toronto city it will bring disaster to toronto so no king for 100 years was ready to bring railway line to toronto this great lady wrote on the file which is the evil spirit whom great patnam sami cannot defeat so let the evil spirits come patnam sami will take over uh, will take over that spirit he, he she extended the railway line direct to tambano and a big uh, bus station was also built and connected that line straight to nagarkovil and kanyakumari and the chengota line was also connected to trivandrum what happened people from tamil nadu kanyakumari areas and the chengota areas and people from kollam alappura and other areas could come to trivandrum do business and the business prospered the coming of the wealth from other areas other than kerala brought wealth to this place this rani told that there was only one road in kerala at that time the trivandrum mc road main central road built by another great accountant ramarao he was he came from andhra pradesh who who constructed the second lane and etc but he constructed a road because he said the country will not improve if there is no road so people started constructing in the road but when the vwd people say, went on constructing the road they cannot fight with the incoming people living there so they started constructing road on the boundaries of all the achayans living there and this way the road was curving and curving when all the achayans property was exempted and when the road constructed up to angamali if you travel in mc road you will go from first you will go to east then you will go to west by the time you reach muvattura you both your body will start paining because road goes like a snake rani said what kind of road is this people should have good road to travel she said connect the road from kollam through the sea beach straight to ernakulam and connect it to tangamali in cooperation with the kochin raja and watson started this great work and that is a great highway from trivandrum straight you can travel through alappi to kottayam and then uh, go to ernakulam and the mc road and the highway met at angamali trade prospered trivandrum became our wealth accumulated when this rani came to power the travancore had a net balance of 1.25 lakh rupees but in 7 years she created such a miracle by accounting 
that after all the constructions, all the railway stations, uh, highway and all these constructions, after seven years she left a surplus budget of 6.75 lakh rupees. After that, so far in the last 190 uh, years, no finance minister could bring a surplus budget in Kerala's history. No finance minister. Every time it is different. This great Rani did a marvel using Watson, Cotton and Barton, all the three tons. They were wonderful accountants, very good engineers, and the prosperity of Pavan Guru was brought. Another great Rani was park put in Ethiarama of Kuchin, Kuchin Kingdom. In 1914, she was the wife of uh, Ramaraja, uh, Ram Ram Ramaraja, in whose memory we have Ramaraja. This king was a very good astrologer, but he had absolutely no idea about what is administration. So he told his wife, she belonged to Vadakke Kurpam Vittal, to which our Chinmayananda Swami and the former Chief Secretary Parat Mohandas belongs, this uh, Vadakke Kurpam Vittal, a great Nair family. He told her, you do the administration, you bring the file, I will sign wherever you want. <laughs> so literally the administration was handed over to Parakutanithyaram. Cochin Kingdom was running at a loss, and the British has calculated within six, five years, Cochin, Cochin Kingdom will go into, into financial ruin. In that time, Cochin Kingdom can be annexed to Malabar. Cochin royal dynasty can be finished forever. It can be annexed to the British Empire. This lady, wonderful lady, Parakutu Nethyarama had about six accountants, very good accountants and financiers. One Brahmin and the three of them were Chettiyars. And one of the great Chettiyars was Shanmugam Shetty, who ultimately became India's finance minister when India became free in 1947. That was one of the person. She knew whom to depend upon. And then she created a miracle of the highest order. Around the Vadakunanan temple, she created a road, circular road, and shops on both sides of it. She created the first water supply system in which the entire people of Trichur town was given water. water. And she developed such industries that Kuchin Kingdom became a surplus kingdom. And within five years, Kuchi produced a surplus of more than seven lakh rupees. The British Empire was flabbergasted. And the British Empire gave the greatest award to Parakutanathyarama, Kaisari Hind. The only other fellow who got this award was Mahatma Gandhi. You should understand that. Mahatma Gandhi got Kaisar again. The second person who got it was Parakutanithyara. She transformed the whole of Kochi. Now, six accountants, including Shanmu and Shetty. And she made a miracle. By 1934, when Ramaraja died, then the other kings took over. And after 20 years of rule, Parakutanithyara retired. And when Mahatma Gandhi's letters were published, six letters are addressed to Lila, letters to Leela Avadi. This Leela Avadi was none other than the daughter of Parakutanethya Rama, to whom Mahatma Gandhiji was corresponding. That was a great lady. Now, when accountancy was well prospered, two queens created the great kingdoms of Traumur and Kochi. If accountants fail, country fails. The empire falls. This is the great thing. So each one of you sitting here may be looking after one business or one trade firm, etc. But each one of you, if you can make that particular firm in which you work or for which you are a consultant, a success, the net result will be economy will prosper and the great dream of our Prime Minister to create an, an economy of 5 trillion US dollars may become possible if each one of the chartered accountants work. If you don't work, one by one industries fail and totter, how can we reach 5 trillion economy? How can the power district in India improve? No. So if India has to improve and reach 5 trillion economy, and the poverty can be extinguished from the Indian soil, accountants have to work. For which you are teaching students from here, and each one of you is looking after so many persons' economic matters. See to it that. Each of your effort become a success. That is the source with which the economy of Kerala and India can prosper.
Today, a new set of officers under Anil Parameshwaran is taking over. When he takes over, I remember a scene from Ramayana. After telling this, I can stop. In Ramayana, Lord Rama was assuming power. And the ceremony with which Lord Rama is installed as the king is recorded in Ramayana. Fantastic uh, installing ceremony. First, the Brahmin priest came. They washed his feet and then blessed him. O oh, Rama, let your feet be so strong that any journey will not be frightening for you. That you have the strength in your legs to go for great long journeys for this country. Then the Brahmin priest washed his knees and said, O oh, Rama, let your knees don't bend before any enemy in your life. Your knees should be so strong that you should not bend it to any enemy in your life. Then they washed his genitals and said, O oh, king, morality is a great thing for a king. Never be immoral in your life. And Lord Rama had only one wife. She was also absent for a long time in his life. But he never became immoral, Lord Rama. <laughs> then they washed his buttocks backside, said, let your backside be firm on the throne for so many years, so many decades. So that the Ayodhya will become a great empire. They washed his backbone and said, Oh Lord, Lord Rama, I am, we are washing your backbone. Let your backbone be too strong that you shall not bend before any enemy. You shall not bend before any evil. Be strong, let your skeleton be very strong. Let it be erect, they said. Then they washed his chest and said, Oh Lord Rama, let good thoughts remain in your heart. Let you be a kind-hearted person, showing mercy to everybody who come before you. Then you are a kind-hearted person, you will become a great king. Then he washed, then they washed his mouth and said, let good words come out of your mouth. Not a single foul word should come out of your mouth. They say, language shows the man. If you show, if you use alter bad language, then you, your strata from which you are coming from will be immediately known. If your words are right, if your language is right, people will realize, oh, this fellow comes from an aristocratic family. Language shows the man. So they blessed his mouth and said, let good words come out of your mouth. They washed his eyes and said, O king, let your eyes see good things in your life. But your eyes should also see the things concealed from you, the dangers concealed against your country. You should be able to see. Then they washed his head and said, let noble thoughts come to your brain. Anam, Krayandu, Bhavandu, as we say in our Upanishads, let noble thoughts come into your brain. They blessed him and they blessed the crown and put it on his head. And Lord Rama, after the installation, became such a great king. He became a model for the whole world. And Rama Rajya is the first concept of noble kingship in the world. I bless. Let Anil Parameshwara and his team have their feet so strong that no journey and no project should frighten you. You should be able to go any length to achieve, till you achieve success. Let your knees be so strong that it shall not be bent before any enemy. Any enemy of you, not only you, but the chartered accountants, any enemy of the chartered accountants, don't bend your knees. Be morally correct. And sit in your chair for one year with full confidence, every day doing the right things, so that at the end of 365 days, the whole crowd sitting here should say, get up and say, we had a triumphant year. That should be the, the cry which comes from this crowd one year after. <coughs> I bless that like the Rishi said, your chest should have a kind heart. It should be merciful. When you draw projects, that project should be able to help 
so many people and you should have good feelings to everybody that is the one of the crux qualities of a leader let your mouth be blessed that not a single foul word should escape out of your mouth let your language shows that you come from such an aristocratic mind let you have your eyes blessed so that you should have very benevolent eyes you should do good things but any danger concealed also should be seen by your eyes let your brain be blessed so that let noble thoughts come to you as lord rama's blessing let anil parmeshan and his team get all the blessings so that the chartered accountants in of this random branch have a successful year a very resounding success coming to you in this year and all the chartered accountants should think how wealth can be created poverty can be alleviated and let us have a noble great society with us with all the best wishes let me have the best blessings coming to each one of you sitting here also thank you very much